the introduction should be something like you saying something like welcome to the coach's office all right welcome back to the coach's office podcast uh we're here it's what april 12th Wow, time's flying. We're coming up on semifinals. Yeah, yeah. I just saw them uh, post about sort of the order of operations yesterday. Looks like they picked for us this year. So last year, the athletes got to rank order uh, which ones they preferred to go to. So if you had four options, you say, I want to go through for this is my number one pick, this is my number two, this is my number three, this is my number four. Uh-huh. And then based off of your seating where you finished in the open, they placed you into these specific categories. So, like, yep. if you were top 30, you got your first pick. You know, if you're 30 through 60, you got your second pick, most likely. Yep. Just kind of they tried to evenly place people, quote, unquote, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, they picked for us this year. They said, they really just sent us a survey. They said, do you want to go? Would you go if you, you know, if we sent you an invite, would you go? Mm-hmm. And any comments? Mm-hmm. You know, that was it. They didn't say, did, uh, what, what, is, what, is there something keeping you from traveling out of the country? Things like that. They just mm-hmm. asked a few questions. They didn't ask you where you wanted to go. Mm-hmm. And then they told us they were going to send us emails Friday, uh, which was like the 9th or something like that. Mm-hmm. And we didn't get anything until today mm-hmm. or yesterday. Yesterday okay. at like noon. And they just told all the athletes where they were going. So it looks like I'm going to be going uh, the first weekend, May 20 to 22nd in Tennessee. The, Mac. uh, it's not the mid Atlantic CrossFit challenge. It's the other one. What you mean syndicate. there's two in Tennessee? Yeah. What? The syndicate. Uh, and then the mid Atlantic CrossFit challenge. So there's two in the same spot in Tennessee. Same location. Same people are programming it. Same but event. I think it's a weekend or two apart. I'm confused. CrossFit didn't I this is what I don't I guess they've never been clear on how they pick who programs these events. We yeah, which so is, yep. we don't know <clears throat> really how they how they get into doing something like that. Like it for example, if I know t- this whoever it is, I think it's the twelve labors team or whatever, the twelve labors CrossFit yeah. team. If they're gonna be programming these events, whose programming should I follow for the year leading up to the event? Are they doing that? Well, I yeah. went, I've been at twelve twelve labors. Club. Yeah, I yeah. Like and, and I know nothing I know nothing. You know about the group. All I know is they've competed the games. They ran the Mid Atlantic Challenge for the last however many years. Oh, I didn't know that's who did it. Okay, <clears throat> yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. So they put it on. They program for it. Um, so you know, like if I'm an athlete, I'm gonna want to mm-hmm. follow their programming. Yeah, which I believe yeah, you have sure. to buy. I believe. Uh, probably could be wrong. Um, but so I just don't know how you would get a position like that. How you know it's like, hey, CrossFit, I'd love to program for one of your events. Yeah. How does that? How do you go about? applying for a position like that Ooh, okay you know? i i this am is, yeah i'm picking up what you're putting down yeah so yes. i think they wanted to run four events but they i think they just got couldn't find maybe one or two or another one i think they needed one left and they couldn't find who was going to do it so i think they the just 12 gave them two. probably just offered and they're like okay. hey we can do another one and they ran another one hmm. i don't know though all right because it's so do so do you think they sorry for cutting you off do you think they should be the same event like the same test so crossfit headquarters is going to program <laughs> two of the semi-final events of each one of them so there's one in canada one in granite games and then two in tennessee and crossfit's going to program two of the six events i think there's going to be six the people that are in charge of running the events are going to program the other four okay what do you think about that i know what i mean i'll, I'll tell you my opinion but I think, all right, first first thought. Personally, I don't like being micromanaged, so I'm not with the middle ground sort of take on it at first glance. Me personally. Middle ground being? Middle ground being you do some, I do some. Yeah. Compromise, the compromise space. I think I would rather it, you know, uh, hot or cold. Like, don't be lukewarm in this you True. program all of them or i program all of them mm-hmm. now it's not you're still going to run into the same critique 
it does seem weird. Like it's like, hey, I'm gonna. F- why are you programming two out of the six events? Like if you're programming two out of the six events just so that you have your little bit of control inside of that event, you're not really. You don't it's, really have any control. It's equity, inclusion, diversity That's at its what worst. It seems like yeah. it's it's at its worst though. It's a, a great example of like, hey, you think you're throwing bones to people at this point. Like you think you're being kind. Helpful. You think you're being equitable, inclusive, and diverse in this, and you're not actually. You're using principles to to help you think through what would be most helpful, and then arriving at this lukewarm place where it is not helpful at all. So um, last year, they CrossFit didn't program any of the events. They gave over autonomy. They mm-hmm. let everybody do it. They ran it. We saw what happened. It was, um, in your opinion, you know, are you able to speak, you know, transparently about that? What you think was the year that they got to any of the events got to program for themselves. The programming was not the same as CrossFit's programming. So CrossFit headquarters programmed an online event that was uh, head and shoulders above the rest of the competitions. It was great. Yeah. Right. It was very well rounded. It was classic CrossFit. Yes. The events that the just got to be programmed seemed random. They seemed, uh, they seemed like there was just arbitrarily put together. Yeah. It didn't seem like there was anything. It didn't seem like the the right people were running it. Mm-hmm. I don't know what else to say. You know, like it just didn't seem like a you know mastermind put it together. It was like a, it was just kind of finger painted together. You know, like just yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and so the CrossFit's initial solution to this, the antidote is, well, let's program. We'll program some of it and we'll let you, you know, do that. We'll hit the but it's like how can you hit the essentials in your two workouts? Like what what is your goal here CrossFit? Just get to buy these two workouts. Are they going to be two you know, 40 minute chippers or something, you know, and you're going to have all of the right things in it that are, you know, the really good tests where you could really tell who's making it out of here by these two workouts or am yeah, I like, what are you saying that you can do it in two tests? Yeah. Right. That, that sounds like what they were kind of saying. Well, all like we, a, it's <laughs> that's what you have to be led to believe that that's what their conclusion is. We can do enough with our two. Or our two are going to be able to separate the cream from to the you know to the top or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. The cream rises to the top. Yeah, um, I experienced that for the first time recently with the milk for the <laughs> girls. We got this like super good A two cow's milk, whatever for them. I'm anti dairy, like full blown. But uh, I love milk. <laughs> yeah, my stomach doesn't, <laughs> so I'm I'm anti dairy. Personally, nah. I don't. You can do whatever you want. Uh, but uh, shout out to ketchup, right? Uh. Anyways, um, to all my haters and my ketchup take. You got a lot of hate. I don't <clears throat> care. A lot of ketchup hate. You don't get it. I want you <laughs> to get it. But I'm going to go into a rant about it soon. But coming back to it, if like if you're going to do this, cream of the crop makes it to the games. And the cream rises to the top. And you're saying you can do it by just programming. T- the fix is just adding two of yours in. I think you're tricking yourself. I really don't like that we're in this era of just smashing on CrossFit. But they're doing a lot of things wrong. Like it seems to me that they're just like randomly going about this or their focus is on the wrong things you know maybe they're thinking about their priorities are in the wrong place maybe their priorities are in the wrong place and that's why they're doing all of these things that seem just random and they're just making decisions by whim and even the most charitable take on that is their priorities aren't in the wrong place we just don't know what their priorities are so we can't make sense of anything going on around us in the crossfit space for the crossfit community for the CrossFit games for this competition, all of the above, because we're actually in the dark, like full blown in the dark. There's not even some type of uh, public 
representative for them. Who is speaking on behalf of CrossFit at this point to the public? Who's talking about there's no, no like, I don't know. And that's like, the most, at all. yeah, that's the most, that's and the kindest thing you could that's say. That's the about kindest that. thing you could say about it, like to- fully. But now, because they're not doing any of these things, and they're just they're doing this arbitrary nonsense, and then you hear about it secondhand. You know, it's like Savan gets an email about Dave being fired from a you know from a person that's still working for CrossFit, and then Savan breaks the news, and then Savan's the only person talking about it. But then all the other independent CrossFit outlets are talking about it. And don't get me wrong, I love that things are decentralized, right? We want decentralized. I could go on a rant about a bunch of different topics that are very uh, prominent in the decentralization space. I'm cool with this. However, why is it impossible for the broad community to figure out what's going on with HQ? It's it's just completely hidden at this point. I don't get it. Why is it so uh, cloaked in mystery? Yeah, this is, no, that's a good question. I don't know. That's the that's I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, is there? Why are things usually cloaked? Right. I'm. Gonna, I don't want to be cynical, but I'm like, okay, if you're hiding something. Or if your motives are completely the wrong motives, like you're you're not gonna share with the public what you're doing, right? Or, yeah, that's my best cynical answer, right? And you just because you don't want to be, you know, you, you don't want to be naive to think they're just, oh, they're just not sharing because, you know, something's going on where they are busy or something. I don't know, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I don't know what to say about it, but people are bashing them, and they kind of deserve it if they're not going to talk back. What do you think um, an antidote for them could be? What would be like a first step for them? Start a podcast? Do some type of weekly... They have a podcast, don't they? Uh, I don't know. Bosman and Sherwood talk... I don't know. Sherwood? Bosman and Sherwood have a podcast. That's paid for by CrossFit? I don't know. Beyond the Whiteboard does it? I'm going to check it out. Beyond the Whiteboard has... I'm gonna I think do it's some Beyond the Whiteboard does that with Boz and Pat. I but they like talk both. a lot about a lot of the concepts, a couple of the concepts that we talked about, but yeah. basically stuff from the CrossFit Level 1-ish. Okay. I haven't really dove into it, but I should. I need to a little bit. I'm... It's, it's really hard to do good sense-making on this because there are so many... Uh, there are so many things to care about. There's almost too many things to care about. So you have to really pick and choose what you put your attention on. And if you're just a Joe Schmo, gym goer, you're not going to put your, you don't need that. Like you don't actually have to give your attention to that. Mm-hmm. You're not really focusing on that. You're you're still focused on this, this localized, you know, my support your local comp idea. Mm-hmm. Like, like you know the people in your lobby know the people in your class know the then extend from there know the people in your gym and potentially even know your community surrounding you know your gym your five square miles wherever you're at like that's very helpful it's actually it's it's super important for your life in general like that's a good antidote to hey where should i keep my time and attention where should i what should i focus on the symbolic nature of what this place represents that's phenomenal However, we realized over the last two years with COVID and everything, you get a bunch of things being projected at you, and it was impossible to figure out what was what is going on because you have so many things being projected at you, you can't figure out what's true. And the reason you can't figure out what's true is because the old myth parable story about the boy who cried wolf had came true where the majority of the news outlets, the majority of the trusted sources, the majority of the people you're getting your information from ended up crying wolf too many times to when if they did have some bit of truth that they were saying, it was no longer, um, it was very, very hard for you to be charitable to them and to listen to them and to think that they were being honest, that you probably didn't even hear the honest thing that they said because you had turned it off because they had cried wolf too many times. Makes sense. Now, but CrossFit's not that old. 
it doesn't have that far of a reach. It doesn't have that big of a platform. There is no ESPN discussing CrossFit. There is no mouthpieces to say to start doing this. So now you just get YouTube commentators. You get us talking about it. You get people that care about the competitive side talking about it, sort of whispering behind the scenes what's going on. Yeah, but there's a lot of that. There is no... There, it doesn't seem like there is an actual conversation taking place um but maybe i maybe i'm naive tell me if i'm stupid i don't think that or this is what i mean by naive and stupid where does um where does the average gym goer go to figure out what's taking place uh in CrossFit, you could either, I mean you could either talk to someone at your gym lo- that you go to, or you could find it out online. Outside of that, you don't really have a space that you can do that. You know, there's not a lot of content being shared from CrossFit.com like there used to be all the time, and you hear right from the CEO or you right. hear from, you know, someone who's up there and they'd be explaining the workout of the day or explaining a concept or explaining an idea. Mm-hmm. And they were always bigger. They are always thought bigger picture, mm-hmm. and it doesn't seem like we get a lot of that now, but. All right, so let's. All right, so I got something for you. Um, the last two years, CrossFit has been shaken, like shaken, shaken, and uh, we should give up on the video. Yeah, I'm gonna give up on the video. Um, the uh, but has been shaken, and uh, uh, what was my thought? Okay. They're running an experiment currently. Seems like it. Greg Glassman tweets Floyd 19. Gets canceled. Canceled. Fired. Yeah. He gets canceled first. Remember, everybody had to come out and say something about it. If you didn't, you were a racist. I remember that. All right. Okay. So. Vaguely. that's, that's That's canceling. That's not fired yet. Canceling is the public response to a corporation. Yeah. It's the public's response to pressure the corporation into doing the firing. Yeah, mob mentality. Sure. So the public responds to the tweet. The tweet gets him fired. He um, is fired. The public is proposed with the solution crossfit's not dead do not worry eric rosa your savior is here he is a crossfitter and he is going to buy this company so he sold it he technically didn't get fired he just sold it so he didn't get fired he sold it but somebody comes in and is supposed to buy it but he actually doesn't buy it he's a one percent owner and he had a bunch of venture capital to buy it okay Okay, he just ended up being the face. He was just the, he was a part of the hyper-reality that shaped the new focus of CrossFit. Right. CrossFit is not bigoted. CrossFit is not racist. CrossFit CrossFit will embrace (laughs) equity, diversity, and inclusion, and CrossFit will be better. It will be anti-racist. It will be all of the things that anyone that likes in <laughs> equity, diversity, and inclusion would be four. Okay. Now, fast forward a year and some change from that. Dave Castro's got to go. If you don't see the correlation between those two things, I think you should relook at it. Fast forward, how long has it been since Dave got fired? Not long. Like three months, four months? A couple months, two months, maybe? Three months? Um, And we're at a place where we're about to see this semifinal event happen. They're trying to be better and insert. What does be better mean? This is the question. All right. right? So. Yeah. You said that multiple times. They're trying to be better. and they Be better. What does that mean? Does it just mean that? What are they aiming at? Well, when I look in the mirror, I I look better, right? Mm. Or it's like, am, am I actually trying to make change and affect 
the community in ways that will build it up for the long, bigger picture. So is this, and I think that that statement is not antithetical to making money. It's antithetical to immediately making lots of money. Yeah, this is a rabbit hole here. Um, but that's my hypothesis of what's going on. Yes. Is you're trying to, they're trying to revive and bring in the next era of, of uh, CrossFit's funding. This is my, this is my, you know, okay. uh, conspiracy take. CrossFit needs more funding to do more, to be better, to grow more. Because they have to pay back the people that bought it. Oh yeah, right. That's okay. Oh yeah, but I don't think that's a conspiracy thought. But okay, great because it's not. I just am gonna allow you and whomever to go down that. Okay. To say that, or it will be said of what I said, anyways. But it doesn't matter. The reality is, uh, most things that are conspir considered conspiracy theorists are just business problems. Uh yeah, like a. Like a twisted incentive or something like that. 100%. You, yeah. Well, you just need to pay off who you need to pay off. Who needs to be paid? That's the question. Like you said, follow the money type thing. Who needs to be paid because of this acquisition of CrossFit? And then you will realize why what's being done is being done. Yeah, just watch the uh, watch one of the uh, inside the leaderboard shows and look at how many sponsors are on there. Great. Versus th two years ago. And I'm not... All right, so just, and we could talk about this. Yeah, I'm just saying that that's a... Just right. go look at that. That's an observation. It's an you observation. You can see it, and it should point you in a direction you should understand. You should and fully get it. The, uh, side, the counter side would be, hey, that's something good. That's growing the company, bringing more money in, going to give it eventually, filter it down to whoever. Right. So what is the classic saying about... <laughs> what is the classic economic saying about uh, trickle-down... The trickle down effect. That's essentially the argument that's being made. Right. With oh, CrossFit's just having more sponsors. Then more sponsors will get in, and they'll pay the athletes more. And then, if the athletes get paid more, whatever. Right. The sport grows. Right. And if the sport grows, the gyms grow, or whatever. Right. I see those points. Like those points, y you're 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 making valid points. Yeah. I get it. That's like, an idea. That's kind of what CrossFit was doing back in like when it peaked in like the what. 2016? Yeah, I think that was... Yeah, I mean... The right first before they went to Madison? Yeah, yes. Yeah, I think it probably peaked then, like, viewership-wise and attention-wise, and um, things just changed slightly around that time period. So then you go ask what changed, right? And And you're saying that the incentives of the company have changed. It seems pretty clear that that's the case. So what's the difference between then and now? I would say, in, which is my thought, would be what what their focus is. So what instead of their focus being on making money like it might be now, their focus was on developing their product being the CrossFit Level 1 certifications and the affiliates and the games. Pause. Greg Glassman, Greg Glassman took on who? And he was taking on Coca Cola and Bro, Gatorade think about that. Think about what he was doing. Something nobody else in the world seems to be doing, or at least successfully doing. He successfully sh shined a light on, I think, those two cases. I'm not sure how familiar you are with the two cases, but, um, or at least the two that I'm thinking of. But, anyways, um, not to be uh, too long or anything in this explanation but anyways for the listener greg glassman the founder of crossfit took on coca-cola why he wanted to get a uh, warning label on their drinks because because of their drinks are unsafe to drink essentially not unsafe to drink but they're uh very bad for you hazardous <laughs> I, th I believe is the legal term okay hazardous to one's health and we can't tell you what you can and cannot consume. 
Unless we can. You know what I'm talking about. What? But, uh, but the, <coughs> this Coca-Cola, this, you know, harmless, tasty soft drink you eat with your cheeseburger from McDonald's. Uh, turns out they had a couple of skeletons in their closet. Turns out that they were funding research to support them not being hazardous. They created a couple of conflicts of interest. If you're the major funder of is what I make detrimental to someone's health or not, mm-hmm. Um, and the results come back in your favor, one might think that, hey, that might be a a conflict of interest. You probably can't sponsor the study looking into whether or not you are safe and effective. Yeah, normally that people would think that. It's a normal thought. Greg Glassman goes in and takes on Coca-Cola. And you're saying it like that because they're such a big company. Of all, I mean, bruv. But you're saying it like money is power. You know, which it is, right? I mean, in like, the but legal then, framework. But if you're going after someone <laughs> that has the company that has money like that, like anything that's gonna yeah. harm their profits, they're gonna try to hide. Yes. Or obscure, or change the language. Right. Or change the studies. Right. Or say that it's not, it's not that bad, or not harm, not as harmless, right? Mm-hmm. And so. Or not as harmful. Sorry. But. I I bring this up. I mean, it's obvious why I bring it up, but like there is a there is a part in which this was really really going after sort of the underbelly of a couple of industries that CrossFit was really really deciding to care about. And when I say CrossFit, I mean this gigantic umbrella that all of us who do CrossFit are under. Like you're actually under this umbrella. You should actually care about um, sports science papers. The battles. They, sports, they called it battles, right? Yeah. Sports yeah. science nutrition being um, sponsored and paid for by Coca-Cola. What does Coca-Cola have anything to do with sports science nutrition? Mm-hmm. You could say they want to get into that space. Well, great. Let me tell you both sides of that camp. You let them into that space, and they're going to spend $1 billion on finding things that are healthy and helpful for the body, and then they're going to spend $10 billion on hiding the thing that they produce that sells way better. Or marketing it. That that makes way more money. Mm-hmm. All right? You want to hear an interesting uh, bit of information about the 20... Actually, I'll just ask this question. Who do you think... Paid for 75% of all advertisement on national television in 2021. You 75%. Me. You tell me. Just take one guess. I uh, want one. I want one guess. I don't want to guess it. You just one. Me. Just one, please. It's just, uh, um, it doesn't matter. Just go quick. doesn't matter. Who cares? Yeah, it's a pharmaceutical company. Pharmaceutical companies spent 75% of all advertising yeah, in 2021. Al- well, aren't they not allowed to advertise in other countries? Yes. Like, they're not allowed not to do at, that. But not at all. in the United States. Yeah, all yeah. right. How long have they been able to advertise in the United States? Good question. I don't know. About 20 years. Okay. Makes sense. I've been seeing it my whole life. We have seen... We were the first generation that was allowed... That advertising pharmaceuticals to was allowed. Okay. All right. If... I think it is silly to think that... You and yours and me and mine and our community and those around us are not drastically different because of the 75% of the money Pfizer spent. And that's silly. Unless you don't watch TV and unless you don't, you know, scroll on Instagram. Like, well, it's actually just a TV. Unless you didn't watch TV, which I didn't, um, then Pfizer has some part in your sense making actually whether you know it or not you well because i mean that's kind of what they're they do with the advertising isn't it right the whole point of advertising is to just get the get you to recognize the brand 
Right. You and don't then you know. trust the brand without even knowing why you trust it. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Just because you've seen it on a right television show that you like, or right. you know, it seems to be professional. Right, and it must be vetted, and it must. Yeah, you'd, 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 you'd be stupid not. You'd be too cynical not to to think it otherwise. Right. And obviously, they um, are being honest. That's the assumption. Right. Okay. Until. You take a little Joe Blow that starts a fitness thing or whatever that turns into what CrossFit is, and in 2013, 2014, 2015, Homeboy takes on the fact that you just lied to everybody via science, via studies, bought and paid for by Coca-Cola to trick people into believing that this thing is good, proper, and healthy. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's an incredible battle to enter into and to I, win. Right. I mean, I... He was very passionate about it, and that was one of the things that I loved about what he was doing. Because it's like nobody else was taking that on. Right. People were trying to online. They have no power. They have no ability to go after them. Like, and then all of a sudden, he did, and then and won. Right. Well, I mean, you're not going to hear about that unless CrossFit shares it. Which should be the thing that CrossFit shouts from the rooftop. Like, why is this pinnacle of the CrossFit Games athlete important? Well, it's because you take on juggernauts in industry like this that are creating a hyper reality for people that think this Coca-Cola is what they need, bro. Can't you see polar bears drink Coca-Cola at Christmas? Don't you want to drink Coca-Cola with your children at Christmas? (laughs) That's funny. It's, I mean, but JB, aren't there... um, don't you have things in your life or intake that you shouldn't intake that are detrimental or whatever it is? It's like, yeah, bro, I smoked cigarettes for like six years when I was like 12 to like 18. You may think, JB, you're lying. You smoke cigarettes when you're 12. <laughs> I did. I don't care what you have to say about it. Like, <laughs> it is what it is, right? My older brothers all smoke cigarettes. I looked up to my older brothers. Therefore, I smoke cigarettes. I had a fake ID to buy cigarettes at 14. It was of an Asian man. <laughs> and bro, I don't know how it passed, but That's there's, hilarious. you know, uh, my local homies from, uh, I don't know where they were from. I think they were Afghans, um, opened this place called Tea Hut in Fredericksburg, Tobacco Hut. It was the plug. You went in, you got whatever you wanted. For me, it was just cigarettes and uh, moved on from there. So, yeah, I'm guilty of this. I get it, you know, like I, I really get it. But guess what I found out? That cigarettes are actually really bad for you, and you shouldn't smoke them. Mm-hmm. Zero benefit, <laughs> right? And uh, so I don't do that anymore. Uh huh. But to get this, it's I don't know what to do for people when this is all out here. It's in the open for you. Like it see, or why does it seem like it's in the open to me? For people to just go grab, take hold of embody become better get a little better every day Mm -hmm. move forward and well it's what what are you focused on what are the people focused on you know i'm confused at what what people are focused on because i don't get how um how veiled or how much wool is pulled over your eyes or whatever to see like some of these like i think we're in this space yeah we're in this space and we care about these things right yeah. But we care about these things for, it's like, well, does the average gym goer need to care about these things? No. I, so they don't, right? So, but we, we talk about them because, I don't know, maybe we we think about this types of these types of things, like a little bit bigger picture. Because you see, in the f- <coughs> this would be harmful in the future. Yeah. You know, like you see the detriments of smoking cigarettes over a lifetime or drinking Coca-Cola over the lifetime. Like, right. And it's my job to help people in the gym become the best version of themselves. And part of that would be maybe warning them against, hey, let's cut down how many sugary drinks we drink throughout the day or throughout the week or whatever. Right. Like, So I have to pay attention to things like that. And I kind of almost help do that for people. So you're like a piece of the people sense-making that come into the gym. Yes. So you're a part of the sense-making process for the community. So we're talking about this because we care about this. We think it's important and we think it goes deeper than 
like it goes further into all branches out into all sorts of businesses and it's just essentially everywhere right and you can see these patterns everywhere and it's really hard to like that pattern word is exact that's it right there the patterns it the the pattern of smoking or the pattern of Coca-Cola. That's what it, that's the next thing I was going to say. It's like the cigarette, it's addictive. There's an addictive quality to it. Right. So they know when they're marketing it to you, they just have to get you to do it a few times. It's like not right. it's not like they have to sell it to you after mm-hmm. that point. It's the same thing with these beverages and that's what, you know, that's one of the things that Glassman was probably going after was right. that you really get addicted to it. It's like Go through a grocery store when you're like have that little sugar craving or whatever. Yeah. You buy. It. I was thinking about it the other day because I had the same thing, and you just like want to eat all the donuts and all the cookies and all the sugar. It's like your body just like it just craves it right. at times. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like the same thing with the sugary drinks. It's so hard to break free from that or break yourself from that habit. Right. But if you're not aware of it, you're never gonna want to break free of it. Like you have to really dis- d- like want to get rid of that if you want to make right, a so change. So this is what like this is where I feel same with um, all the fitness stuff. Like you have to really want to come into the gym and work hard to make a change. You know, you don't just. Eh, I'm just gonna try CrossFit. Like I'm just gonna dabble in it. The. Uh, the first Matrix movie. Where you get introduced. Like in the beginning, the f- the first scene is actually super dope. You you have Trinity. Trinity's locked up in that room. Agent Smith shows up, right, and he's walking up, and it's dark and it's rainy. It's mm-hmm. it's I mean it's iconic. It's such a great opening scene, and the cops are there and they're looking, and he's like, you know, what's going on? What's going in there? Or what's going on in there? And Agent Smith says that to the police officer, and the police officer looks back and says, "Sir, you don't want you know." You don't want to go in there. I already sent my men in there. You know, like we got this under control. And he looks at him. He goes, you know, uh, sir, your men are already dead. Mm-hmm. Scene continues. Trinity, you know, demolishes them. It's phenomenal. And you're left thinking, like, who are these men in black figures? Like, who are these guys in these black suits? Are they feds? Are they whatever? And then you come to find out that they're called agent smith Mm -hmm. they are part of this construct program yeah they're a program their computer program that's a part of the construct that is supposed to show up and squash down legitimately squash any dissension that is running against how the program is supposed to operate all right if you can think of a corporation like you can like you can think of the matrix and the corporation has meaning it has purpose and it's per and that corporation also has Agent Smiths that show up to squash any form of dissension, to try and tell you like to just come in and be whatever sort of um pin to pop the balloon that needs to be um popped in your sort of uh exploration of is this true or not? Mm-hmm. So you get all the explanations that you just gave but you arrive at this place of you know something. For instance, I'm going to use my ketchup analogy very specifically right now. I told everyone that there is sugar in ketchup. Lots of people I know are either having fun with me by poking at the ketchup take. They're having fun with the fact that, you know, I'm talking about ketchup and sugar and they're poking in a couple of different ways or they're being agent Smith and they don't know it. They're showing up and they're saying, what's so wrong with ketchup? I like ketchup. Mm -hmm. Ketchup's good. It tastes good. Millions of other people like ketchup and ketchup tastes good to them. And if you keep going down this path, I will get enough people who say the opposite of what you say Mm -hmm. to make others forget that you said what you said. There's a good point because I was going to say the Agent Smith doesn't even have to be a person specifically. It can just be, or it it doesn't have to be one person. It can be anybody. It can be. Well, it turns into everybody. It turns into everybody. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Which is kind of what it does in the movie, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, you're... Uh, the... Yeah, and it's almost like... Like a Greg Glassman's Floyd 19 comment. Bro, do not tweet that, you dumbass. That's so stupid. What a stupid, stupid thing to do. So dumb. You got every... I'm not going to... You got every person's attention when you said that. And then you did it in a time when no one could make sense of what you were saying. And you didn't get to tell people what you're saying. That's a cryptic message. Now... I have to come back and revisit that on this podcast for everyone to know. Hey, don't say that. That's wrong. He was not right when he said that. All right. What was he not right about? You want to really talk about something controversial? Like, what was he not right Maybe. about? He had he had a sense going on in his mind that was connected to those two things. What was happening with George Floyd? And what was happening with COVID-19. And then he combined the two. Who knows what he meant? What did he mean? And now you're stuck in the place of interpreting it. Mm -hmm. But you get you get the right person showing up at the <clears throat> right time, interpreting that the right way. You might get it. You might get the opposite of what happened. Or you get somebody showing up and interpreting it the right way. Because you don't know if the take is right or not. But you kind of have to say that the take of firing Greg Glassman towards this event was the right take. Because there's an army of people who are going to say, if you don't agree with us, you're a racist. No, no ifs, ands, or buts. Like, at all. Like, no explanation. No exploration. Mm -hmm. in, in any way. Yet, this entire thing is about exploring. This entire thing is not about canceling something. The entire purpose of this experiment, the CrossFit experiment, is to get away from saying, no, I can't, and saying, yes, to please let me try to do my best, and then I will attempt to do it again later on. Like, it was the, it is the thing. It's like, but... At the time that he, he said what he said, it cost him dearly. Mm -hmm. I have no desire to explore the tweet. Like, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. anymore. What I do have the desire of exploring, though, is why we didn't explore it. Why it did need an immediate response. Why it was, why during, why during that time was everything, everyone's attention was like 30 minutes at a time, an hour at a time, a day at a time, like real short, super, super short. I don't think people remember how short your attention was in April of 2020, in May of 2020. You speaking in general? Yeah. Well, I mean, I remember. You remember? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, if you haven't thought about it, you don't remember. And we're, you know, we're two years out for the most part. And yeah, we're still making decisions like that. Ooh, it, it, and CrossFit's still making decisions like that. And CrossFit. And this is, and that's my point. You've, we're, this is full circle. I didn't bring this up for no reason. Oh, I, yeah. You know, it's, bro, are y'all still making decisions the same way? Like we're, please tell, please tell someone. <laughs> well, these are the, these are, this is who you put in charge of the company. You right. Put these, the, and I'm saying they are making, dis, this is what you put in charge of the company. And this is how they process information and how they make decisions. And what they're focused on is these types of, uh, their persona, let's say the company's persona in the public space more over more so than the quality of the product that they're placing in the in the public space. So if they're captured, if they're a captured operation right now, beholden to shareholders, 
do you think that they're that this is redeemable? Like, do you think they have a chance of getting this right? Oh, I mean, of course they can, of course. I mean, but it's not like, um, like not like anything, not like the future set in stone, right? I believe that. So, I'd be stupid to say no. They can't. But right. So get your stuff together. Going, like, I mean, all I know is all I know is what the past looked like and what today looks like, leadership wise. And the leadership is just not the same. They're not focused on the things they should be focused on. They should be focused on the CrossFit Games. They should be focused on uh, creating the best test they possibly can. They should be focused on creating content that helps the uh, the athletes that go into the affiliates. They should be helping the affiliates. But, you know, I, there's an argument that they've never really helped the affiliates. You know, there's that argument. But in all of the things that they did, in turn, those things helped affiliates. Right. You know, all of the all of the content they created around right. the games and training and nutrition and health and all of these things. They right. they help the affiliates, you know, whether they know it or not. Yes. So it's a it's a difficult I don't know, it's a difficult debate. Don't know what else to say about it. I think that uh um the 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 desire for CrossFit to make money, the desire for it. Well, here you go. Is CrossFit marketable? And then who is it marketable to and who's buying in? And are we just, are we just realizing that the initial investment left the Reeboks left the Nikes left the whatever they're all leaving. And it actually turned out to not be a space that did produce economically the way that they thought it did dude i'm reading the most interesting book in the entire world right now it's second to creature from jekyll island it's called the confessions of an economic hitman it was written in 2005 and it is one of the most fascinating not depressing but like like oh man that's crazy okay um and i'm gonna give you a tiny bit of the premise all right Make money by leveraging another country. How do you leverage the other country? You trick them into believing your economic projections for that country. The economic projections are done by an economic hitman. That economic hitman is very proficient in taking statistics and presenting them to you and yours and your government in a way that makes you say, yes, we would love to take out a loan from you for that infrastructure, for that electricity, for that public transit, for the whatever it is, so that my space becomes as desirable as some of those other places around the world because we would like for our space to flourish in those ways because if our space flourishes in these ways, our people flourish and our area flourishes and life gets better. Okay. That's the premise. All right. Sounds like, hey, here's a shiny object. Do you want to ch- come chase it? Yes. And who doesn't chase it? And I think this is part of the core issue that we're discussing. It's what so it's what Instagram's created. It's what the athletes do on Instagram now. Okay. Okay, if we're going to talk like yeah, that, right? So it. it's like the same idea. Athletes jobs are what? Um, I'm going to say perform at the highest level. I would have to agree that, and that's what I pr- probably say too, is to compete and to win. Mm-hmm. Right. <clears throat> but like, if you're going to do that, you need to be able to support yourself. Right. Yeah, you need you, to make a living yep. somehow. Mm-hmm. And it's like, unless you finish top five at the games or whatever, you're not probably going to make enough for the year for make a living. So you need sponsors. Right. And to do that, you have to essentially sell something sell yourself or sell or be, uh, attach yourself to a brand right that you guys mutually benefit from mm-hmm. and there's a lot of the shiny object things like you can you can really sell yourself online for clicks or sell yourself for you know a monthly payment or whatever it is you know right so i just feel like that exists in the space and it's like it's the same thing that crossfit seems to be going after right now instead of going after the idea of 
just trying to be the best you can in a competition. Mm -hmm. You know, like at the athlete, athlete for relating athlete to the CrossFit, right? As a company. So, tell I don't have a better story. No, I think well, but it's it like a, that's the one thing that I've learned is like don't go after the shiny object. Do the right, like do what. Do what you know to be right, and the other things will fall in place. That's a pattern. That's a that's pattern. A, it's a pattern, but it's a pattern that's not attractive. It's not a shiny pattern. It's yes. not a pattern okay. that everybody in the world wants to follow. Correct. Yes. I, I don't know what else to say. It's like, I, you know. I'm curious what, how we've gotten so uh, far away from that or deceived. Like, there's a part of this that I want to talk about, you know, later on that we could. Um, it's not valued. People aren't valuing that. Right. Like, where's your, where do you put your value? Like everybody. And when I say value, I mean attention. Where do you put your attention? You put your attention in the shiniest thing, the attention in the thing that grabs you, the thing that you want to, to be, you want to be. Right. And you can play on that with people. Like you can play on those feelings like coca-cola and cigarettes like these are the same things they're playing right. you right you're you're they're using you yes. to make them profit yes and it's the same thing that happens in the in the space of this instagram celebrity type person yeah maybe no yeah they're they're set you know unless they're genuine right and i am which that exists i'm not saying it doesn't exist i think it has yeah it has to it exist. has to exist yeah. but <clears throat> most likely it's few and far between, you know? Well, yeah, it, it it doesn't seem to even, it doesn't seem to be set up to reward genuine. No. Like it's set up to reward hyper-reality. And to participate in something that rewards that is interesting to me. Like... For instance, I get caught on my Discover page like all the time with this page called um, It's Bleacher Report. It's like a ESPN mm -hmm. sort of like uh, thing. Sports thing. It's a sports thing, but it's Bleacher spelled wrong report. <laughs> so it's not the actual Bleacher Report account. It's uh -huh. Bleacher but R-E instead of E-R. And... It will be like a hot take, like, you know, s somebody just got traded to this place. And, like, you see it, and you click on it, and you're like, oh, my goodness. Like, you know, LeBron's going back to Cleveland. And then I was like, wait, please, that's, that's not spelled right. And then I click on it, and it's like a spam account. Oh, uh, okay. But somebody's actively creating, like, cognitively creating uh -huh. a mind f for you in your sense making by just monetizing fake it's a really um, weird fake information projected as real information on that a gets your attention that gets your attention and it's really weird time period we live in that the that's what people are going for that's what people people are vying for your attention it, like they're really vying for your and click. Like, they know it's for like they sure. know you better than you know you. You know, it's really it's really wild. What's even more wild is to come back to that book. Is he got profiled to become this thing, this economic hit man? Mm -hmm. He got profiled. He went to the best institution, and at the end of it, they said, "Hey, we've uh, um, we spotted your excellence. We would like to invite you to come to Oxford to to do this little." you know, s small, you know, uh, fellow program. And it's like, and it's like you just get profiled and you get profiled again and then you get tested again and then you get surveyed again. And then at the end of it, it's like, well, you're actually the perfect person to go into this place to tell them that their country is the next one to thrive. Mm -hmm. And then you sell them, you know, uh, yeah, I get you, what you're you sell them this goal. It's an and interesting book. I'd like to read it. Done for. You're done for. Yeah. Because you're even done for because people are preying on the best parts of you, which is the the. Yeah, and it's the, like if you're not like, if you're not doing your own sense making in the world, then you're not 
you fall prey, you could easily fall prey to these things, right? Yeah, well, it's a good thing. Don't you want your country to do better? Don't you want your people to do better? Don't you want to prosper? This Don't is the biggest trick that's being played on people that bothers me now. It's like that's that exact thing. Yeah. It sounds so good. It's like, well, who wouldn't want this? Who doesn't want that? Why? Why right. would? Why shouldn't you say that? Right. You have to. You have to dig down another level, yeah. and then maybe another one, and see the the reasoning for it. Why? Right. You have to ask why, and it's like if you don't ask why, you're never gonna get the truth. But mm, yeah, it's gonna be hard. It's just really, really hard for for people to find um, the the truth or the thing to believe in right now, and because you have so many people that are skewing what's true to get your attention. Yes. Because the thing is that they want your attention. Right. That's yeah. it. Correct. It's like uh, the Peugeot idea of attention is prayer's attention. Yes. Right? Whereas when you're praying, you're paying yes. attention. Yes. You're, you're giving God your attention. Yes. It's almost like attention is the currency of the universe is what they say kind of thing. Attention is the currency of the universe. And now we're learning how to monetize that in our world. Right. And people are falling prey to it every day because they're just unaware yeah. that attention is the thing that they have that everybody else, all these companies want. So don't give away your attention. Like, right. I mean, I do it all the time. I hate it. I'm going to get rid of my phone. All right. You want to see some scary? Uh, <laughs> Maybe. There is a there is a man. His name is Yuval Noah Harari. Okay. He's Klaus Schwab's. Yeah, I've heard of him. Second in command. Yeah. The WEF guy? Yep. Yuval Noah Harari has, uh -huh. sailed, has said in multiple interviews with multiple very people, recently. very recently, all over the world, that humans are officially hackable. But this is kind of what we're just talking about. This is the same thing. The reason I bring this up is you should go, the listeners should go and look up his name, look up his TED Talks, look up his interviews, mm -hmm. and see if you think he's talking about humans are hackable in a good way, in a positive light, in a healthy light, in a progressive, productive, beneficial, humanitarian insert all of the good words you possibly could associate with it or i'm gonna take a guess all of those words though are going to be presented to you as uh the thing you're going to want to let attain. yourself be hacked for you're yes there are going to be the reason why you do it uh-huh exactly it's crazy it's insane it's because it'll make you happy and happiness is what you want, right? Exactly. It's like a, it's like the dystopian movies. It's crazy that we're living in that time, but yeah. So, <clears throat> if you're hackable, and the people in the world with all of the money, the majority, like, I mean, like, almost unlimited funds, have admitted to yeah. you in public that you can be hacked because your attention is so mineable We're in for a world of hurt if you don't learn what almost all CrossFitters learn from the very beginning. Pay attention to how you air squat. Because if you don't pay attention to how you air squat, you can never pay attention to how to squat a loaded barbell. You'll never understand the weight of the world if you don't understand an empty book bag on your back. Like... You can't take on the weight of the world if you don't know how to take on fixing your ankle flexion and your mobility and your tight calves or whatever it is, or your hips, mm -hmm. to be able to do an air squat. Yeah, and this is what we see as coaches, is we see the result of the way that you move and warm up and how it, pers how it cascades into your workout and then how that workout day cascades into your week and then how the week goes into the month and then you start having knee pain after two months mm -hmm. so it's like these are the things i try to correct when i talk to people or when i am making slight modifications and always comes across as i always get the stare of like why that doesn't make sense to me but 
those are the things that I see. Yeah. And so I kind of look at the body mechanically, you know, right. And biomechanically bio. The, yeah. And the person that's coming in has no idea that, that there is something to care about so far down the line. Mm-hmm. Like nobody, nobody starts air squatting really well. And here's the critique of the air squad and all of the above and think, you know, uh, 20 things down the line of, Oh man, that little, that little th- pattern, the pattern of caring about the air squat and how I move is the exact same pattern of thinking about how I really need to pay attention to the fact that somebody's trying to hack my attention to yeah. get me to do or move or be a certain way. And if you're unaware of these pat, I think these patterns are really, really key. Like if you're unaware of these patterns, you won't see the importance of CrossFit doing a certain thing or, you know, taking a certain stance. Right. You might think it's great. You just think it's arbitrary. Or you just think you, it's the times. Yeah. You know? Yes, And you dude. fall into saying that, well, it's just, that's just, that's just the world we live in now. That's you're just, just going to have to deal with it. And I'm like, ah, uh, I get, I see where you're coming from, but you're just a little, like, take it just five years more. Think about it just a little bit longer. Yeah, just a little bit longer. Like that's I exactly get what, what it is. you're saying. Because you can say charitably to that person, yeah, man, I agree with you. That is the time. Which you, sure. which is true. It's not like right. they're making a statement no, that's right. false. Right. You're not making a false statement. I'm not saying you're making a false statement. I would just like to say, do you think it's possible to extrapolate this thought four more years, mm-hmm. five more years, ten more years, right? And it's like... Because you're so... Because you un- we understand how easily tricked you can be. Right. And hackable, as this guy uses. Yes. World Economic Forum. The guy uses hackable, the term. Correct. These companies know this. They know, like, uh, Instagram knows it. Oh, yeah. Google, Twitter, Facebook. They all know it. The TikTok. They right, actually bro. have people that study this stuff, which is, I don't know, maybe people just don't think they go that far, but, Yeah. Here's a here's like maybe just like a little pay attention, keep your eyes open. Yeah. I'm full of these stories. Um Target, the Target Dad. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Story. Like that one is the one that should that's the one you should go, wait a second. Um the I think I live some type of private life and you don't you actually don't. If Target knows your daughter is pregnant before you do, man, where I read that in a Malcolm Gladwell book, wasn't it? Malcolm. I Gladwell didn't read book? this in a Malcolm Gladwell book, but I just I found out about this just perusing the normal places that I peruse on the okay. internet. But uh, yeah, go read about that story. Just read about the Target there story. There you go. They you knew, just read. Yeah, that they knew their daughter was pregnant before the parents did. Right. And because they were getting advertisements in the mail, not yes. even like over the phone. Right. In the mail for baby products. Yeah, for baby products. At the it's right like, time. Because cool. they knew, you know, nine mo- around nine or around, you know, eight months out, they start sending them advertisements. That's insane. Dude, it is. it should chill you. But Ben. I mean, it doesn't. Like, it doesn't. But Ben, don't uh, you want, don't you want access to all of the baby stuff? As soon as possible, like, wouldn't you want Target to be able to know so you <laughs> you buy your diapers, you know, appropriate, appropriately, mm-hmm. early? It's mm-hmm. like, no. Or you get a discount. No, you do not want that. I'm telling you right now, you don't want it. But if I look right now, I do. You know what I mean? Like, if I just stay yes. right here, then right. I do. And that's if you stay right here at this in that veil, you're like, this is obviously a good thing. Target can help me out. Target mm-hmm. cares about me. There you go. That's this the is why I don't say a lot when we bring up these subjects because they're so deep and they're so like intertwined into everything. I don't know where to start. I think it's a little bit of this. Like I see these patterns everywhere. and I, I don't want to convince you Target does not care about you. It's just true. Yeah. And then, but if I, but if you made a statement like that, I could come back with. <clears throat> Well, those I go to Target every day, and the people there are the nicest people in the world. What are you talking about? They don't care about me. And now you, you know, need to like, know how to process nuance. Once again, shout out to my <laughs> haters for saying I say this word too much. However, you better add it to your lexicon, because if you don't know how to live a nuanced life, to, you're 
in for a world of hurt because you yeah, can't process simple statements like Target doesn't care about you. Yeah, that's a tough one. It's like another pattern. I like the term pattern. It's really, really good. Really good. If you're good. looking for patterns in the world, you s- you find a lot of stuff. Like you find a lot of uh, find a lot about about the world and about how you you interact with the world and how people interact with each other in the world. And it's, um, even with CrossFit and everything, and yeah, a lot of these you're seeing a lot of these same patterns pop up. It's like almost like CrossFit was a a separate. It's it's steered clear of these types of patterns, and then all of a sudden, like it just jumped right in, like, yeah, boom, just jumped right into these patterns, right. And it's disappointing, I guess, because mm-hmm. you can we can see kind of where the direction that it's headed. Like if you're gonna make all these decisions about just trying to pay back your in, your investors rather than you know caring about the sport, like CrossFit should program every work out for semifinals 100 percent. and if you think otherwise i respect you but i don't think that you're right right you're actually wrong yeah and like i whoa yeah people can be wrong you know but it's like right. that's fine that's there's another point have you never got something wrong before i get things wrong all the time right all, all the time. time constantly this one's very set in stone it's very solidified there's and it's just the experiment was run it was yeah, run like for so long they've to been then doing change it. it. Yeah. Was silly. Good yeah. for you. Good for you for trying something new. Maybe. Fair it's enough. being very charitable. Very charitable. However, I also don't think you need to be that charitable. Nah, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Let these people run their event. Let them have whoever they want, what vendor's there, where they want it, whatever it is. But the Yeah, whoever wants to program it. By the way, CrossFit, I'd love to program for you guys, so let me know. 100%. And um, Yeah, it'd be fun. Bro, that's a great... Man, man, would that be dope? But I also such, don't know that if that would I, be such a great. But it's test. also kind of a conflict of interest if I'm selling programming online for competitors, because I'm going to program to a way that I, tra- yeah. I train myself, you know, and I, and I have a certain style. All right, let's be. I've always thought of programming as kind of artistic style. There's an artistic style to it. Here, let's table that and let's do a pod tomorrow because I need to go. All right. Um. I, uh, or at least talk for like a couple more minutes, but, um, man, think about this for the next pod. The, this question, do you, do you think, do you actually think you could do it? Could I what? Not create that conflict of interest. Do both. I, I think I'd be naive if I said I could, I, you know, cause I just don't think that, I think that it's just in there. Man, we're not gonna do another podcast on it because you're right. To think that you can is the person that thinks. Th- like I don't. Yeah, I don't think that the, I. I don't think that I know everything. Right. It's the, I don't think that I'm yeah. a very smart person. Like I just think that I. I'm just trying to stay open to things and stay. You know, you want to stay aware of things and and. To f- people that, you know, argue with argue that I'm saying that I know everything. I'm like I don't know everything. I just I'm saying something that you've never heard before. And I could be completely wrong, but isn't it worth like thinking about for a second? Right. Why not explore it? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's harmful. But Maybe I, it is. You know, like if like here's the thing: if you notice that all of these, uh, it's the the whole Peterson idea of like, oh, you're gonna change this thing because you think it's gonna make it better, it could blow the whole thing up. Right. You know. Right. I, you could you could spin that both ways, but like CrossFit, who's in charge of CrossFit? Yeah, that actually thinking, thinking they're doing things the right way for the better, but they really are blowing it up. I feel like I have a good example of my in my life recently of that, dude. I do have a good example of that. It's so sad, dude. I got two thousand dollar electric bill the other day for the coffee shop because of this freaking a hole messing with things that he shouldn't have been messing with Whatever that I wasn't that. there to take care of mm-hmm. because I wasn't there. It was kind of just like sort of signed off on like, Hey, yeah, just do it, do what you got to do so that the espresso machine could work. Mm-hmm. 
Well, and actually, the espresso machine worked that day, and uh, we made 400 bucks. And then the next day, uh, it cost us two grand. It's like, man, oh, man, did you have no business messing with that thing. Like, it would have just been better to not be open that day. Mm -hmm. Like, $1,600 better. Yeah. Why is that always a hindsight's 2020? <laughs> like, is that what we're trying to say? Like, hey, is there a way to not be in this looking backward place? Like, can you spot yeah, a pattern early enough to say, hey, maybe don't do that? Maybe that's what we're that? trying to do. Maybe that's why we're so interested in these things. Maybe that's why people pay attention to the news, the world, the way the world works, the, the, <coughs> the, the, the they're talking about CrossFit and the programming. And, and it's like, maybe that's why people care about it because they don't want to get tricked. Huh. Yeah, that's I really like that hypothesis. I really like that. That makes a lot of sense. But we're all being tricked regularly. Which isn't to say that you shouldn't try to not be tricked. Yeah, that would be stupid. It would be stupid to not try an air squat well. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Hmm. Like, like at all. All right, I'm going to think about it. We'll pick it up next time. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks.